thanks for choosing to watch the video if you enjoy it then please like and subscribe and all that stuff in this one we're fishing the river blackwater and the river lee for chub So in this video, we're roaming around the river fishing for chub. Uh, we're doing it with a mixture of bait and lures. In the first part of the video, we're fishing the river Blackwater, which I've never fished before. And in the second part of the video, we're fishing the river Lee, which I am pretty familiar with. A couple of weekends ago, I decided to go on a backpacking tour around the New Forest and ended up in the Isle of Wight. Did a bike ride all the way around the outside of the Isle of Wight, camping as I went and on the way home the traffic was getting pretty moody on the motorway uh, around about the Hampshire area I was going from the New Forest back to Hertfordshire I was going through Hampshire and the, yeah the, like I say the traffic was getting a bit nasty and I decided to duck off the motorway and do a bit of a spontaneous um, session on the River Blackwater because I've got a ticket for that now I think what was quite interesting about my little session on the Blackwater was um, I really am an advocate for using roaming methods such as lures or, or rolling meat or something like that on a new stretch of river. Uh, just purely because um, you're moving around the river, river quite quickly, um, you're getting to know all the swims, you're, you're understanding the depths, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're picking out swims that maybe you'd quite like to come back to and target with bait on another session. Those roaming methods like lures and rolling meat, they just allow you to cover lots and lots of water and really get to know the river in a fairly quick amount of time uh, for your subsequent sessions. It wasn't planned or anything like that uh, and I only had a couple of short hours so this is me for the first time ever fishing the river black water for chub. So a lot of it is choked with reeds. Look, I mean, trying to fish a lure in that is a bit tricky. <laughs> so I've got to wander around, try and find some clearer spots. So this is looking a little bit better. The water's a little bit deeper. Oh, oh, I just got a hit from a little perch. <laughs> oh. oh, just got hit. Just got hit by something. Let's have another go. Come on, have another go. Right, don't know what that was. Oh, perch. <laughs> That's what it was. Oh, there we go. There we go. Thought it was a little perch, and it was. There you go. <sighs> it's a beautiful day, it's got to be said. Sort of feels like I'm fishing for small stuff at the moment though. Feels like I'm fishing for small perch. You know, it's as soon as if I see some big chub, then I'll feel a bit more confident maybe. But of course, never fished this stretch before. Oh, look at that perch chase it in. Oh, he really wanted it. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of small perch. Could have a lot of fun with like a micro fry or something like that in here. At last, we've seen something. I put this in, and uh, I've spoken before about oh my God. Just, just saw a really decent barbel. Actually, I think. Right, okay, I can see where the chub are sitting. Looks like some nice ones as well. I just want to quickly show you the lures that I'm using in the video. You've probably heard me mention these in some of the other videos that I've done when I'm talking about crankbaits. That is the Salmo Rattling Hornet. It's in Chartreuse Blue. I've got another version of it here. Can't even remember the name of that one, if I'm absolutely honest, in terms of its colour. But again, it's a Rattling Hornet. Both of those that I've shown you there are four and a half centimetre versions. Here's another one. I think that is a holographic shad. That's in three centimeters. And then I've got this other new one, which is really cool, which is just called a little bug. 
and that looks absolutely magic and I can't wait to use that a little bit more. You might notice that I've adapted the lures. Here's what a rattling hornet looks like straight out the packet. You can see it's got two sets of trebles on it. What I do is I remove that front set of trebles. So it ends up looking like that. Just a rear set at the back. And even on that set at the back, I will pinch down two of the barbs. I just think that it's easier when it comes to unhooking fish. You know, I'm fishing for chub and I think just one set of trebles is perfectly adequate to fish for chub, personally. So that's just a quick look at the lures. Now back to the fishing. I just saw what I think looked like a nice barbel. Obviously, <laughs> if I do see some barbel, I probably will go back to the car. Follow right to the bank. Right, I'm going to maneuver myself into a better position here because this does look like it could get a decent chub. Clipping the reeds. He was definitely interested. Come on. Got to get the cast right. That's pretty good, I would say. Yeah, getting fish following it right to the bank. Now, this is probably one of those situations where if you've not hit it, if you've not managed to sort of get that bite within the first few casts you've kind of blown it and uh, yeah I just hooked up on a reed when I didn't want to there you know uh, let's have one more go you never know at last I've seen some fish which is reassuring some really quite nice looking chub there actually just couldn't quite get my bait to them uh, yeah but and then in the end, they, they knew what was going on. So we'll come back and we'll try that in a minute. At least we know they're here. Nearly always with cranks, it feels like uh, if you're going to get them, it's almost the first cast in the swim, you know? Well, you can't bore them out, you know? If you've not had them within a couple of casts in a swim, then move to the next one, it feels, you know? Um, yeah. You go into a new swim, you chuck it in, that plop actually turns their head. You'd, you'd, you'd think it would spook them, it doesn't, it attracts them. They like the sound of the plop. <laughs> so you move into the swim, you cast it in, they hear the plop, straight away they're on alert, start to retrieve the lure and they smack it. Now if that's not happened within a cast or two of being in a new swim, then they're probably not there and just move on. Keep moving. Keep moving. So lots of swims now. Oh, this one looks quite nice. This is one of those ones where you can cast almost in front of you, but then let the drift take it underneath this tree to my right. Right, so we go. Let's see if anyone's home. And we let it take it under. Take it under and further. It's important to remember in your mind where you got the hits, where you got the knocks, uh, because I'm going to come back this way and I will definitely be trying those spots in a little bit more detail on the way back. What a dark little hole this one is. Oh, massive heron. Well, there's a heron here fishing. Don't know what that means, but... I, uh... I've said it before that if you're on a new river, like I said, never fished this section of the river. In fact, never even fished the Blackwater before. But either rolling meat or crankbaits on your... Oh, there we go. 
so we got something decent. Yep, chub. First decent fish. Awesome. Yep, going for the near bank as I always do. There we go. Oh, and he's dropped, dropped the crankbait in the net, look. How cool. I was just about to say that either rolling meat or crankbait fishing when you're on a new section of river is a fantastic way to fish just so that you get to know the river. You know, even if then on your next visit, you come back and you fish static, you know, with, with some bait. Um, because you've gone the whole stretch, either with rolling meat or crankbaits, you've picked out the better spots. And uh, yeah, you know, could definitely sit in this swim quite nicely with a, with a rod just over on that bush there. Now that I know, it's one of the better swims. Right, let's have a look at this fish. He's not very big and he's ditched the lure in the net. But I'm still really pleased with him because he's a first, he's a first fish from uh, the Blackwater for me. Been on a bit of a bike packing and camping adventure in the Isle of Wight and just stopped on the Blackwater in Hampshire on the way home uh, to chuck a few lures around. And yeah, got myself a little chub. I'll carry on up the river, hopefully I can catch a couple more and then I better hit the motorway and get home. It's cool, just had my first fish from the black water. Not a big chub, but it's always nice to get a fish from a new venue. No, we'll move on to the next one. Oh yeah, oh nice pike, oh he's off, yeah don't mind that, <laughs> it was a pike, it absolutely nailed it, I was just checking that my GoPro was on and uh, he came off, uh, yeah can't say I'm bothered, <laughs> yeah that's pretty good. No? That deserved a fish. Come on. You know when you do a cast and you think that deserves a fish? That was one of those. So was that. Come on. I can imagine a chub just sitting underneath it, you know? But it's so many times where you can't see any fish, but you think, I bet there's one sitting under there. And uh, sometimes there is. <laughs> There you go. Again, give the handheld stuff, but very quickly rushed back to the car and gone into rolling meat mode with the opportunist rod uh, and just stuff that's uh, a little bit more suited to the job. Let's go back and see if we can nab one. There's a bite look still on the back of the car. <laughs> right, this is a bit crazy, but I've come back to the car and I've got my opportunist, a stronger rod uh, and you know the, the day pack and all the bits in there for rolling meat. Uh, I'm going to go back there and see if I can nab one of those uh, chub or barbel on, on meat. Um, I'm not going to be able to do much GoPro work because I'm almost out of battery. As I say, it's a fairly spontaneous session, this. Uh, I'll probably just have to switch it on if I hook a fish. So let me get this out to where I think it needs to be. Oh, that's pretty good. Yep. Saw the line pick up there. Oh, he's not a monster, but I'm still well pleased. But oh, he's only a baby. Good to know that the technique worked though. It's a little bit of rolling meat. <laughs> I got myself a chub. Um, was doing the lure fishing up and down and um, saw a couple of light looking spots, really nice little spots. And I thought I'd go and get the rolling meat rod, which is what I did. 
and um, the first decent swim, nice swim that I like the look of. Uh, fish straight away. Let's get him back. So yeah, that was cool. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna carry on fishing in here because I've had that fish. I'm gonna put some pellets in here, go up to one of the other spots that I like the look of, and then I'm gonna fish it on the way back. One of the chub again, same spot. Absolutely motored this one. Ooh, I think he's a little bit better. Just saw the line pick up. <laughs> nice to know I can catch these black water chub. Brilliant. Great little spontaneous session on the river Blackwater. Another chub, not a monster, but considering I'm supposed to be on the motorway on my way back from the new forest, um, pleased. Yeah, never fished the river Blackwater before. In a short space of time, I've had a few chub and a few perch, and uh, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> was my session on the river Blackwater, a little short session and I had a couple of fish, uh, no monsters but that's not really why I was there. I got to know the river really quite well in a very short space of time and I'm looking forward to going back there uh, because I certainly feel like I've learned a few things to put into my next session. Now we're going to go on to the River Lee uh, which is a river that I know really quite well. Um, it's close to home uh, and I've spent a fair amount of time there. Unfortunately, we do catch a couple of really nice chub. So here I am on a short session on the lee with my lure rod, catching a few chub. to get some perch so I'm down here trying to get a chub now let's see how we get on there we go oh Jesus Christ wallop that is absolutely nailed that Oof. Oh. whoa wow that was awesome oh I'm getting the net Woof. How cool was that? <laughs> ah, staying versatile. Chub don't want to perch, don't want to play ball rather. And I've got a chub. Yeah, happy with that. On the river with the crankbaits, and this one absolutely nailed it. Just as soon as it hit the water, really, uh, it heard that plop, its head turned. Uh, I gave the, the crankbait a little wobble and it smacked it. Chub just wallop this crankbait. Oh, we've got flood water, so it's absolutely smacked it. Wow, what a take. Looks, looks like quite a good fish, too. Oh, absolutely walloped it. Oof. Whoa, this water. It's pretty firm at the moment. A lot of flood water. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get in. Oh, that was amazing. Oh, what a look to it. Incredible. Whew.
Well, the perch weren't playing ball this morning. So I got the crankbaits out and had this cracker. Absolutely smashed the lure it did. Absolutely smashed it. Uh, let it float underneath some trees. Uh, let the flow take it under the trees. And yeah, it got absolutely nailed. Uh, keeping versatile in terms of what I'm fishing for. And yeah, going home with the result. Happy with that. Home for breakfast. And that's it. That's another chub video. Um, <clears throat> as I speak to you now, uh, we're coming towards the end of September and um, it's gone incredibly warm again. You know, it was nearly 30 degrees yesterday. You know, the conditions are insane at the moment. You know, the, the temperatures are so up and down. I spoke in the last video about how I can find it tricky when temperatures suddenly drop. Um, I think the same goes for when they suddenly rise. What I'm looking for really, for really good fishing, is, is constant temperatures. And they are a little bit up and down. Uh, we're managing to catch some fish still though, so can't complain. I'm not sure what I'll be fishing for next. It's kind of dictated by the conditions, really. Um, if it carries on being warm, then I'll probably have another crack at those river carp. I never really got my teeth into that this year. Um, so um, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing a few sessions on the river to try and catch a carp or two. Um, having said that, if the temperatures drop, then I'll be after those perch, you can be sure of that. Um, I've done a couple of sessions, including my last drop shot video. They're proving quite tricky on the lee at the moment. Um, so might be looking on some of the other rivers, uh, but certainly can't wait to get into the perch fishing. But that's it for now. If you enjoyed the video, then please like and subscribe and all that stuff. Until the next one, look after yourselves, stay safe and be lucky.